Welcome back, everyone, to Miris, the world of mice and crickets and shrimp and bees. If you're new here, I recommend you watch the full series here in the top right corner of the screen. Miris, the world of mice, is a seed world. A seed world is a world seeded with Earth life by some other intelligent life form. In the last episode, we saw the evolution of predatory mice. These mice caused a boom in evolution similar to the Cambrian explosion, delving the mice into most terrestrial niches, and the shrimp taking the seas. Still in the Vertimerian period since the Green Sea is still there but receding, however, the climate is cooling and the snow plains are expanding faster, and the continent of Galos is slowly heading towards the continent of Pellas. In the plains, there's a heavy built thick skulled herbivore. The singing Muscramen, or Muscramen uterbomus. This Muscramen has evolved a large throat-like pouch. This pouch is used to amplify their calls and songs across large territories, like an orangutan. They do this to keep tabs on each other over long distances. They use their thick skull as a weapon against predators. When the night comes and the singing stops, a slightly smaller and more sneakier creature has evolved to eat. This creature of the night is none other than the night Muscram, or Ostromus violetans. It is a slim and deer-like creature that eats the grass and wheat under the shadow of night and away from competition from singing Muscram. This species has some sexual dimorphism, as the male, left, has a crest on its back. They also have violet-colored neck fur to impress mates. They gain this purple color from their diets, which sometimes contains violet flowers. There is one hunter that feasts on the moose gramen of the plains, the rat hound, or Edamus magnum dens. They have evolved their rodent incisors into sharp teeth similar in function to Smilodon. They have gray fur and hunt at night using ambush hunting. They also have pointed ears to detect prey. One lineage of land shrimp has evolved on the isolated island of Scalana, but then migrated to the mainland since they can walk at the bottom of the shallow sea that connects the two continents. These scrants have convergently evolved as ants, evolving neoteny and eusociality. They have evolved multiple forms to all help the colony. The only female is the queen, who lays eggs in the birthing pool that is found in their underground colony. They are large and simply lay eggs and are fed by the drones. The drones are the smallest and venture to the surface to forage for any kind of food they can find. They are also the helpers that tend to the eggs in the pool and are the only ones that breed with the queen. The soldiers are large and armored and have a spike on their foot to defend the colony. All of these shrimp have a blue color to their translucent bodies showing their blue blood. In the great sunflower forest, the giant sunflower trees are pollinated by equally giant bees. These bees are much larger, so they must make their hives on the ground. The giant bees are Melissodosis gigantis have also evolved an additional limb to help stay on the sunflower trees. Another bee is the cage bee, or Apis carnis armocapsis. This bee is a predator of baby musimians. They use their six limbs to make a cage around their prey, fly off, and use their large rostrum to consume the brains first and then the other non-solid parts. Another common creator of the sunflower forest is the musimian, or Musimia simias. These arboreal creatures feed off the giant sunflower seeds and are very agile, having a prehensile tail and mobile primate-like limbs. The honey mouse has evolved into two distinct lineages, the first of which is the hose nose, or Apis dionaris. The hose nose has evolved a nose similar to that of an anteater to feast upon the honey in giant beehives. They have eyelids to prevent stings 
that give the hose nose a permanent squint. They also have a long, sticky tongue to slurp up that juicy, juicy nectar in the hives. The other honey mouse descendant is the jumping apamus, or apamus epes venator. This apamus hunts by leaping at bees. They've evolved limbs and a tail like a kangaroo, and they are bipedal. They have also evolved sharp teeth and forward-facing eyes to better hunt these bees. The spine mouse is still thriving and hasn't changed in 10 million years. A muskramen offshoot has evolved for the harsh drylands. These paramuses, or paramus primus, have evolved longer, almost droopy, rabbit-like ears to deter heat and have shrunk to the size of a large hare. The jumping mouse has drastically changed its method of prey capture, becoming the digging mouse, or mus infrafuria, and digging after roots and worms. They have ears that face the skin so no dirt enters them, and large digging claws on their front legs. In the Gelos dryland, the cowkit, or Aramias bovidopar, is a large herbivorous armored cricket. However, its predator, the scuttlebug, or Chirogrillus domacum scalperus, disregards its armor as the scuttlebug runs under the cowkit and slices its less armored stomach open with its horn and eats its insides. And yes, the mole cricket is still chilling, also not evolved. The ocean on Mirus is dominated by shrimp. But a new contender is vying for dominance. The floating mouse has evolved into a large, fully aquatic creature, the algae mouse, Marbusenepar. This creature is the size of a seal, but has tail-driven swimming. The algae mouse eats, you guessed it, algae! They float on the top and swim through the green sea, eating as much algae as they want. Another floating mouse lineage trying to vie for dominance in the sea is the sea mouse, Manamus sculevora, that eats shrimp, grabbing them with its hands. They eat all shrimp except the sea scraper, which is too large. They have developed sharp teeth to catch their prey. In the sea of shrimp, there has been an extraordinary evolution, fins re-evolving into mandibles, this time much larger. One of these Coridia malins is the sea scraper of Coridia mala altiverde, named because of its deep sea nature and green color. The sea scraper uses its newly evolved mandibles to scrape the bottom of the ocean for munchers, and munches on the munchers. It has grown to great sizes of almost six feet long. A close cousin of the sea scraper is the jaw shrimper, Coridia mala. Triturans. These predators hunt shrish using their mandible to chomp down on them. The shrish, or Caridia pistris altis, are a lineage of algae shrimp that have evolved into an even more fish like shape optimal for hydrodynamics. The armored muncher is a sea muncher lineage that has strengthened their armor and made their limbs small like a trilobite. They have also evolved bioluminescent organs behind their eyes that allow them to communicate with one another. They eat the marine snow at the bottom of the ocean. This world and project has expanded, and this size comparison is covered with animals. Let's see what happens next in this series. Thank you for watching, and sorry this episode was late, but the next one should be out next Monday. Have a great day, and goodbye.